He's been crowned the Abu Dhabi champion of the Mibata Tennis Championships. The 14th version of the legendary tournament saw Stefano Sitsipas crown the champion. And our producer, Pranat Prasanna, uh, caught up with him. Uh, you catch up with him prior to the tournament, didn't you? Well, multiple times, actually. Prior oh, to... your best mates <laughs> now, eh? <laughs> um, I wish. Um, Stefanos, it's incredible the progress that he's seen. Uh, he came into Abu Dhabi as world number four. So he spoke about how this is a condition that he likes playing. He was here in 2019. He beat Kasper Ruud, one of the world number threes. And he beat Andre Rublev in the finals, who was the defending champion. Andre Rublev and Stefanos, they've had a rivalry amongst them this year. So it was good excitement to see. And they delivered on the promise as well. Exciting tennis match, pre-season for the two of them. But, you know, they left it all on the court. Well, he was a Stefan- here is Stefanos Sitsipas speaking to producer Pranav about the Mabadala Tennis Championship. The Journal on TSB. The latest share market and stock market news and updates on Talk 100.3. Yeah, we'll get to that soon. Just before we do, we'll have a quick look at the markets where we've seen that uh, it's extraordinary that it's back in green. The FTSE is up 0.47% to 7,366. The DAX is up 0.57%. The CAC is up 0.61%. And the AEX is also up 0.64% to 700. 4.46 on TSB Talk Sport Business on Talk 100.3. This is Talk 100.3. And here is Stefano Sitsipas uh, having a conversation with producer Prana. Stefanos, congrats on the win. Um, you made yourself big on the net. The movement was there. Your forehand's brilliant. How would you assess your game so far and in this tournament? Overall, it's, uh, it's everything's sort of there. I'm able to uh, close off points uh, at the net and I'm able to rip those forehands from time to time. And uh, my movement seems to be good so far. Um, I'm happy with uh, how I move. I'm happy how I respond to difficult shots and how I'm trying to uh, get out of the situations. And um, the serve also contributed a lot today. Um, I'm happy with that as well. I've had discussions about um, Mentality on the court, mentality off the court. I put way too much uh, attention to detail, and I, I'm sacrificing a lot uh, daily to to achieve excellence on the court. So I wouldn't allow myself to just uh, let my frustration uh, take me away to another planet while I'm on the court. Uh, I've had moments, uh, moments and instances, even this year, where I got frustrated and agitated and. It's, it's not nice when I'm in this kind of place and I try and remind myself to not allow myself to get there. I've had a few situations, I wanna mention which ones this year, but I, I would assume some of the people here would know. And I've tried, to make pro- I've, I've, I've tried to make progress with that and also made promises to myself to, to be a better competitor on the court and uh, to uh, I'll allow myself also to upload other players' uh, um, uh, strokes, obviously not showing it, but to accept uh, when, um, when something is not under my control. Jan 13th, a lot of tennis fans and sports fans around the world will be waiting for Breaking Point, the Netflix series. You are part of it as well, and you said how it is important to show what happens behind the scenes of the tennis world as well. Um, I'm just curious, as an athlete for you, how important is it to keep a balance between what you show to the fans, whether it's an athlete's perspective or the personal side of you as well? What you see on Breakpoint is uh, unedited, is, uh, is raw footage of who I am. I made a, kind of a deal with myself that I'm not going to be filtering anything and things are going to be the way they are in my daily life. How I... Um, live my life on on the tennis court but outside of it as well um i don't think people want to see diplomacy uh in this kind of instances because um they get a a lot of it already um it is important to unveil each uh, and every character's uh, personality and uh, real self And I think there are going to be a lot of interesting stories being told uh, on that uh, on that uh, 
a TV show, which I'm very happy that um, ATP and WTA collaborated together to bring that to tennis. Uh, I'm curious myself uh, as of what is going to be played and what stories are going to be told. And I think uh, it is also very interesting uh, for young kids, and I wish I had this when I was growing up playing tennis, to get a closer look uh, of, of my own personal heroes and uh, idols uh, when playing the game. You said you wish you had this opportunity at a younger age. Is there one player that you would pick and say, I wish I knew more about him at one of your idols? I, I had a few, you know, I had a few. Roger Federer, you know, uh, Marcos Bagdadis as well, uh, was someone that was uh, doing great things for tennis uh, that came from the same uh, uh, kind of ethnic background as me. So um, another player that I really enjoyed watching uh, was uh, Felician Lopez, who I became friends recently with. Uh, great, great style of play. I mean, very unique for tennis. And um, I enjoy that old school um, style of play. It's, it's beautiful to watch. So there's Stefano Tsitsipas uh, discussing and uh, sitting down and having a chat. And you also spoke to uh, Carlos Alcaraz, who is now the number one player in the world. Number one in the world, having won the US Open champion. He is tennis's hot property, the golden boy, if you want to call it. There was a Roger Federer, and then there was a Rafa Nadal, and now there is a Carlos Alcaraz. Interesting, I didn't mention Novak Djokovic because he had a villain origin story. He always was a boy that... If you had a Novak, jo if you had a Rafa Nadal, mm. you needed a rival, and there was your Novak. If you had Roger, you needed a rival. There was Novak. Of course, Novak is now the goat, but Carlos Alcaraz, world number one now. I, I think really is a, really is a situation. That sport is a bit like theatre and movies. Everyone in sport needs a good guy and a bad guy. For tennis, Djokovic has so long been the the Bond villain, mm -hmm. the bad guy of the sport. Well, he's been a bad guy but at the same time he's given back so much to the sport mm. you, you go back in uh, last year 2021 20, I think it was 22 where he wasn't allowed in Australia isn't it Kitch? Uh, it, it was and, uh, right, uh, and played, the amount up, of, played up to his villain position yeah and the amount of support that he was able to garner given you know Australia's you know quite controversial rules Novak Djokovic has given back now more to the sport and he continues to show that he's able to win Grand Slams compared to a Rafa Nadal, who you would say, right, he's done now. Injuries, all that sort of thing. 0586 861 003 if you'd like to get in contact. As we've been talking about, the Mabatala Test Championship, the, the Mabatala Tennis Championships has finished for its 14th year in Abu Dhabi. And one of the many players down there was Carlos Alcaraz, now the world number one, who caught up with producer Pranab Prasanna. Carlos, first time in Abu Dhabi. What did you make of the conditions of this court and how is your preseason preparations going? Well, this court is so fast for me. I mean, I'm used to train in a different different court, you know, very slower than this one. But uh, I would say this is more similar to, to Australia, but uh, I, I have to, to be prepared, you know, on that. And uh, well, the precision is going well. A little bit late for me, let's say, because I was recovering my, my injury and uh, I couldn't do the old stuff, you know, the good precision from, from the beginning. But right now I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get ready and I think right now it's, it's going well. Uh, I'm going to start the year as a number one. Uh, probably the first tournament of the year I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to be the seed number one of the tournament and I mean every player has the, tar the target on, on me, you know, uh, I would say all the players want to, to play against the number one of the world and I have to be prepared on that, you know, the, the pressure, the, uh, the people, I mean the, the players uh, as well uh, is going to have all the edges on, on me, all the eyes on, on me and I have to be prepared on that. But uh, I'm uh, right now. I'm focused on on the precision, on the trying to do as better as I can on, on the precision to to improve uh, a lot in in this month. And yeah, and, um, I know that the, in in this new season is gonna be. Or I will try to to do the same things. You know, to enjoy playing tennis, to enjoy on court, and trying to to show my 
my level and, and my game. And uh, I would say the result is going gonna, is gonna to come with that. Carlos Alcaraz, the world's number one men's singles player, speaking to producer Prana Prasanna on the back of another very, very successful Mabadala Tennis Championship. It really is part of the calendar and probably didn't get as much coverage as you would expect given the uh, the Qatar 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup was on. Uh, 0586 